we have a situation in the culture where uh, there is uh, just an idea that is out there, and this is it. It's an ironclad idea, and homosexuality is a result of either a gay gene or some other genetic encoding of some kind. Uh, it's in the DNA or the, the mitochondria or something. And as a result, anybody who says he or she is gay or lesbian, that person uh, therefore has the right to say and do uh, whatever, uh, you know, whatever it is that they, they want to do with this particular uh, orientation of theirs. Now, that becomes problematic because what it does is it establishes homosexuality as this kind of sacrosanct area where you cannot challenge it. If you do challenge it, there's something wrong with you, regardless of why you're challenging it. And of course, that's our, uh, uh, we see many, many, many examples of that. We did a bunch, covered a bunch of them in the Vortex uh, earlier today. Uh, well, we're going to be talking to one of the examples of that uh, homofascism right now. Uh, joining us from, I believe, his home uh, is Peter LaBarbera. Uh, Peter, are you there? I'm there, Michael. How are you? Turn around and look at your camera. Wave at us here. Okay, how's that? <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you. Keep, keep looking at the camera. We see your, see your smiling face. <laughs> okay, and I'm actually not at uh, my home. I'm at the, the home of a, of a great uh, pro-family activist we, I spoke at. Sinclair Community College on the homosexual agenda and two professors, there was a whole bunch of students when I walked in and two liberal professors led their entire classroom out right when I was about to talk out of protest and took about two thirds of the audience out. So basically denying their students the right to hear an opposing viewpoint, you know, how's that for diversity? Well, I, you know, that sounds like the definition of academic freedom to me. <laughs> <laughs> So Peter is running into, folks, just give a little background very quickly why we asked him on the show tonight. Uh, he is going to be speaking to a pro-life uh, group conference uh, up in Canada, Saskatchewan. Is that right? Is that where you're going? Yes, yeah, uh, Saskatchewan. Yes. Yeah, he's going to be up in Saskatchewan. Is, by the way, has it turned spring there yet, hopefully? I think it's colder. <laughs> Although I'm worried that I'm going to be turned away at the border. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> So the pro-life group asked uh, uh, Peter to come and talk at the uh, uh, at the conference, and uh, and the moment word got out that Peter, who has a very very well known uh, strong stands for traditional marriage, uh, the uh, the moment it came out, all of a sudden the social media you know blogosphere lit up again. And there's all these Canadians saying, don't let him come into the country. He's a hate monger. He's full of hate. He's a hateful man, blah, 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 blah. He shouldn't be allowed to speak at this. If you're going to go there, boycott. It just on and on and on like that. So, uh, Peter, you're right here, a living example of this week's shiny example of the latest victim of homofascism. Fill us oh, in. Absolutely. And you know how bad it is, uh, Mike? It, it, it's so bad that this, uh, this group, Intolerance Free Wayborn, Weyburn, which is the little town in Saskatchewan where the event's being held, uh, they're actually contacting the public uh, minister, safety minister in Canada, and urging him to, to turn me away at the border. So here I'm going to fly in uh, to, to Regina, Regina, and uh, I, I don't know if they're going to say, okay, let's, uh, let's look at your books you're carrying or let's look at your computer. I mean, this is almost becoming like a police state up there when I was invited in and and this group of protesters, these leftists, decide that they're going to um, decide who should speak for the whole town. And I think this is perfectly emblematic of the left. You know, just like GLAD, they're going to GLAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, is going to decide for all of us, me, you, all the Christians, all the everybody pro family. They're going to decide for the whole country which viewpoints get heard on homosexuality. And guess what? The conservative viewpoints, the traditional faith-based viewpoints, they shouldn't be heard. So the left is so arrogant that they think they get to decide for everybody what voices get heard. Do you think, how do you think, I mean, look, everybody says, you conservatives stand around all the time scratching their heads saying to each other, how is it that 2% of the population has had this much influence and, you know, and, and is, you know, ruling everything? How has this happened? How, how does it happen? Well, I think they're very strategic and they're very committed and they've worked their way into very powerful positions, uh, professional associations, academia, and of course the biggest one I believe is the media. 
You know, they've got basically the media convinced now that there really is no legitimate other side on the issue of homosexuality, which is, of course, absurd. Now, hopefully with the, the Brendan Ike situation at Mozilla, and uh, now we've got the, 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 the lesbians uh, setting up the, the Christian photographers in New Mexico, and, the, and lo and behold, that the court decides that uh, a, a Christian photographer has to do business, has to be hired, if they cannot refuse to take photos professionally at a homosexual so-called marriage. That doesn't sound like freedom to me, and so I hope America is starting to wake up and see that what we're witnessing here is a, a sort of a new uh, totalitarianism, a new gay tyranny that's sweeping the land and basically stealing our religious freedom from us. I, you know, I wonder on that New Mexico thing, uh, uh, again, just to refresh some of the viewers, because these events happen so fast and come at you so fast and furious, you, sometimes you can lose track of them. There was a husband-wife uh, wedding photography team in New Mexico, uh, uh, a lesbian couple approached him and said, we want to hire you and, you know, come take pictures at our lesbian. It wasn't a wedding because they don't have that in New Mexico, but it was a, I guess you, for shorthand, he called a civil union ceremony. And yeah. they, uh, and the couple refused based on their religious principles. And then they reported that the, the lesbian uh, couple reported them and it went up the state, went into this and went into the courts and went all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court, which yesterday uh, denied hearing the case. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, at that point, the case had been, the ruling had been against the, the couple, the wedding photography couple, and they wound up you having to pay a $6,000 fine, uh, and they're not allowed to challenge it. You know, my question on that would be, okay, let's say that there is a, a couple, a husband and wife African-American photography team, okay. and uh, a KKK couple comes to them and says, hey, we love each other. We're not gay. You know, I'm Mr. KKK and you're Mrs. KKK, or gonna be soon. And we want to hire you, African-American couple, to take our pictures here. Right. Would they be forced? Would the, would the African-American couple be forced to take the picture of the KKK wedding or, you know, ceremony? As I read this ruling, yes. Anybody who does business with the public, which is pretty much any small business, would be compelled. And the interesting thing is, I read an email today, Michael, uh, you know, the, the libertarian homosexual advocates uh, are upset at this as well. I mean, a lot of people, it's not every gay activist, it's, but the, it's this powerful fringe, these fanatical activists like Wayne Besson, you know, with this group Truth Wins Out, who, who really want to compel people to uh, not follow their, their faith creed and, and, and really believe that so-called gay rights supersedes freedom of conscience. And I think it, there, I don't think really these two are compatible. And so we're going to see this battle going on for decades, I think. I, I'm, I'm curious on this one thing. We've got about a minute and a half left. I just want to throw this out there as a, as a hypothetical to you, because you've been involved in this, you know, battle for the truth for, you know, years and, you know, hats off to you. Uh, it seems that uh, from a Catholic perspective, we know you're not Catholic, but as a legal Catholic, uh, you know, uh, uh, theoretical case here, it seems that when the U.S. Supreme Court eventually rules that uh, uh, there is a right to gay marriage, and then that becomes it, it's solidified like there is a right to abortion. From that moment, that you know, momentous ruling, a whole bunch of other things scale down. Now, if I'm a gay couple, or we're a gay couple, we can go to a Catholic church and say, hey, Father, marry us. And he says, no, I'm not going to. I can't do that. It's against the teachings of the church. They then take him, the diocese, the church to court. And what do you do? You wind up with a case of a constitutional right to be married competing with the constitutional right of so-called religious liberty. And you've got a clash right there. And the court is going to have to choose one side or the other. You also have the added thing that you can say, well, wait a minute. Okay, let's say the court rules in favor of the... Uh, uh, in favor of the church in that case. The homosexual movement can still make the cause. I'm sure I'm surprised this hasn't happened already. They can still make the case that, all right, you can stay over there with your religious exceptions, but you know what? You are receiving tax benefits in, as a group that does not agree with the constitutional right that we have. Uh, so remove their nonprofit status. What do you think of those? 
I think you're absolutely right. Look at what's happening already. I can't remember where. I think it's more than one state where a Catholic school that fired an open homosexual or was learned that a, a teacher at the school was practicing homosexuality. And the, you don't hear the gay activists saying, oh, that's okay. They're Catholic. What you hear them say is, how dare they fire this lesbian, this homosexual. And so that tells me they're going to, it's always moving forward. One thing about the homosexual side, they're always on offense. We're always on defense. They play hardball, we play t-ball, and we've got to start fighting for our rights, Michael, else they will be taken away, and absolutely they will set up churches. And also, you can, you can, if a church has to defend itself and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and take a legal case all the way up to the Supreme Court, what does that do? That sends a chilling message to other people of faith, to other leaders, to other churches, not to get involved. Don't, don't take on this powerful movement. Yeah, it's very true. So it's, a, it's, it's quite the mess, and I think you're right. I think this is going to be with us for quite some time, but I think it's going to be resolved sooner than what any of us actually think. And I do not think it will be resolved in a happy fashion from our perspective. So, Peter LaBarbera, a, a, a big champion of uh, traditional marriage rights, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks for the opportunity, Michael. And keep us posted on what happens with Canada. If you get turned away at the border, you let us know. <laughs> I'll call you with my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much.